Welcome back to Spreadsheet Solving. In our video today, we're going to cover the pivot table, which is a dynamic table created without a single formula, perfect for creating summaries when you have huge lists of raw data, and if you want to analyze relationships between data points. So let's dive into an example here. Let's imagine you're in the student government or ASB and you're in charge of heading up the volunteer efforts at school. Now let's say, in addition to all that, you have this great list of data, which includes all the students' names, their homeroom class teachers, what grade or class they are in, whether it be six, seven, or eight, the number of hours they spent volunteering, and the particular volunteer activity type, whether it be animal shelter, food drive, tutoring, etc. Now you have this great list of data. It's a rather extensive list. You have about almost 300 entries. What can you do with this list? Well, using a pivot table, you can address various different interesting questions, such as how many total volunteering hours did grade six have as, a, as cumulatively as a whole? How about what is the total number of hours spent by activity type? How many students are in each particular grade? Um, which homeroom teacher had the highest success rate in terms of volunteer hours? Now, the, you know, the amazing thing is you can answer all these questions using a pivot table without even writing a single formula. And it's super dynamic and it's super easy. So let's dive in and let's see how we can answer some of these questions. Now, to create a table, to create a pivot table, it's very simple on Google Spreadsheets. If your data is organized as such, like what we see here, by column, the first column header here would be con considered the field. It's called a field within pivot tables. If your data is set up as such, where you have data organized by field, by column, then Google Spreadsheet automatically detects what the cell range is for your pivot table. So what I mean is this. Right now, what we have here is perfect for a pivot table setup. All you have to do is go into Data and select on Pivot Table Report. I click here, and another worksheet or another tab is opened up within my workbook. At this point, I have the basic structure of a pivot table. Now this element here on the right hand side is essential. It's called the report editor and this is what you use to direct the pivot table to be created. So what I mean is this. We have rows shown here, columns shown vertically, and values which is the data values that you want shown within your pivot table. We also have an element called filter, which enables you to see uh, certain types of data that you want. Okay, so let's say we want to look by, look at the relationship between two things. One is grade level or class, and the second is volunteer activity type. This is the relationship we want to analyze. And within these two data point relationships, we want to see what is the total number of volunteer hours. So I go into rows and I can add a field and in this case I'm going to add the class or the grade. So we see the moment we populate that we have grade 6, 7, and 8 come up as rows. By column I'm going to add the activity or the volunteer activity and here we have the four different types of volunteering activities. You'll also notice grand totals are automatically included within your pivot table. Now finally the values I want to show include the hours. So I'm going to include by hours and the sum of all the volunteering hours. So if we click here and show you what the pivot table looks like, what we have here is grade 6 spent 133 hours volunteering at an animal shelter, 125 hours at a food drive, etc with a grand total number of volunteering hours of 503. Grade 7, you can see a breakdown of the number of total hours spent in each activity and the grand total. So in all, within your middle school, 1,446 hours 
were spent volunteering, which is fantastic. Now, look at this. This was super easy to create using a pivot table, which tallied up by grade and by volunteer type. And it shows you the relationship in terms of what grade volunteering hours were by grade and by type. Now, in addition to doing or looking at the total number of volunteer hours, we can also look at, say, the average. So in this case, if you summarize by and you look at this option here, rather than include sum, we can select different types. And in this case, if we select average and we change the formatting, You can see that at this point, we can very easily create a chart or a table here that shows the average number of hours spent volunteering by grade and by volunteer type. Okay, so take a look here, play around with this. In addition to average, you see, you know, if the data values were text values, you can use the counter. You can select max, min, median. So there are all these different options here that you can use to calculate the data within your pivot table. Okay, so I'm going to go back to sum here and I'm going to change the formatting back to round numbers. And what I want to show you now is how we can adjust the rows and column fields. So now we have it by class and we have it by activity type. But if we wanted to, we can change the field and say in this case select teacher. And so in this case now we have by teacher the number of hours spent for each teacher by activity type. You know, so now we can see that Mr. Linden's class had you know, the highest number of volunteer hours spent in total. And again, as you had, would expect, the total number of hours match up to what we had seen earlier, 1446. We can also add multiple rows. So in this case, let's imagine that each of the homeroom teachers has 6th graders, 7th graders, and 8th graders. So we can add another field and include, say, class. And so now we can see for each teacher and by class or by grade, what is the breakdown in terms of total volunteer hours. So in this case, Mr. Bond in total his class spent 167 hours volunteering, subdivided by 59 hours for grade 6, 42, grade 7, and 66, grade 8. So that's pretty neat. We can use the pivot table to now see by grade level for each teacher what the breakdown in volunteer hours is. Okay, so there are so many different ways you can pivot the data or rearrange the table so you can view the data from different angles. Okay, so let me also show you rather than having the number of hours, we can also display other types of values such as in this case if we were to select the name of the students but include this as a count of because remember the names of the students are text we can now see the number of students that each of the homeroom teachers have and also the number of students in terms of the activity type. So in this case, we see that 44 seems to be the total highest number of students. So Mr. Goodman and Mr. Linton have the highest number of students, which would be 44. And, you know, and as you had seen earlier in the raw data list, there are 297 students total. You can also see that actually the number of students spent um, who volunteered by type is fairly equal. Um, 75 students uh, were tutoring, 74 park cleanup, 74 food drive, and 74 animal shelter. So again, the cool thing about these pivot tables is you can look at so many different types of relationships and look at various different types of summaries just based on changing this report editor. Now that you have your pivot table, we want to know how to copy and paste this table. Two different ways to copy and paste, depending on where you're copying and pasting it to. 
So let's say we want to copy and paste it within Google Spreadsheets. And let's say we want to copy it within the tab output. At this point, highlight this table. Hit Control C on your keyboard or click on Edit Copy here. Then go into your Output tab and we're going to paste this table as values. You go into Edit, Paste Special, Paste Values Only. And at that point, you should see that this table matches exactly the pivot table that you created. Now, what we also can do is we can copy and pivot this pivot table into a source outside of Google Spreadsheets. So let's say we want to copy and paste this into Google Documents. At that point, again, highlight or select the table. Instead of copying it, now we have to go into Edit and copy this into the web clipboard. So we're going to copy this cell range right here. And at this point, we can go into the Google document, select Edit, and go back into your web clipboard. And the top option here is the most recently created web output. So we can then click on the top option, and you again will see uh, the exact table that you had just created within Google Spreadsheets. Okay, so that's how you would copy and paste a pivot table. Okay, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.